the very first watches in any collection are special. So are these two, well, at least to me. And to show you why these are not just any Russian pilot or Swiss diver is why I created this video. I hope you enjoy it. My name is Jan from Germany and you're watching the Time Channel. So I found it fitting to actually start with my very first own mechanical watch, this Polyot Aviator 2, which has been in my possession for now, I think roughly about 15 years. I would like to talk about the details of this watch first and talk about the story of it later. So as you can see, we basically have a black dial overall, but if you look a little bit closer, you can see that we have a grayish outer ring of the dial and an inner circle, which is basically a black sunbursty dial. Um, we have loomed uh, numerals as well as hands uh, and small sub hands as well with super luminova coating. And um, what is most striking about this watch, I think, is its red uh, chronograph second hand, which we can see go when we start the chronograph later and when we talk about the functions of this watch. You have three little subdials which actually um, show the different functions of this watch. So you have your normal running seconds uh, going here on the left at nine o'clock. You have a 30 minute counter at three o'clock and you have actually a 24 hour scale uh, of your normal time right here. So as you can see, we're actually right at noon right now and the small subdial is showing you the same uh, 12 o'clock but on a 24 hour scale. We have a small window date here uh, between four and five o'clock and in total, this is a 40 millimeter case size and it is a stainless steel case. And actually I have it on a black uh, leather strap, which is an aftermarket solution since I had to change, I think the um, leather strap now for yeah, basically uh, the second time since I have this watch for now 15 years. All in all, I love the look of this watch. I think it has a very striking composition of gray, black and red. I would like to talk about the movement a little bit more in detail since I find it very interesting actually. It is a Russian hand wound chronograph movement named Polyot 31681. It has uh, a three hertz oscillation so it actually beats six times a second, which you could see on the small seconds hand if you look very, very closely. And um, usually the amount of um, movement per second is denoted by a per hour scale, which means that this watch has 21,600 beats per second, uh, sorry, per hour. And it has a 42 our power reserve, um, which is counted um, for the normal timekeeping function. If you use the chronograph, this goes down by a lot. And um, if you look closely at this movement, and I will um, introduce a few pictures of it, you can actually directly compare it to some more well-known um, Swiss counterparts. So for example, the movement from this watch you can compare to the Vol Joux 7734 quite easily and you will see a lot of similarities. Um, this comes basically from the fact that the Russian um, watchmakers bought up the Swiss machines in the 70s and started making their own movements on them, which initially of course looked very similar to the Swiss ones. It has its own shock absorbing system, which you can see, and it is um, 25 joules, which is a little bit more than the base Vajou movement, which only has 17 joules and beats a little bit slower uh, um, as well. So this one has a three hertz os full oscillation per, uh, and the uh, Swiss counterpart only had 2.5 hertz. So they basically um, just uh, decreased the size of the balance wheel on this watch to make it beat a little bit faster, which might come if it's done properly with a little bit of increase in precision. So I already told you that it has a date function down here at uh, or in between four and five o'clock. And it has kind of a 
quirky quick setting feature I would say which you might know from um, other uh, hand wound movements so you what you basically do is you have um, only one setting for the crown when you actually pull it out there are not two but only one which basically makes you set your time and if you want to change the date you would first have to skip to midnight of course for the date to actually start changing and then if you want to go for another um, day, you would usually have to uh, go around twice again. But with this watch, you can actually alternate something in between 10 um, p.m. and 2 a.m. and keep skipping and the date will change with it. So it speeds up the process by a little bit, but I think this is still a quirky well quick date if you would like to call it that function so since this is a chronograph it of course has the two pushers to start and stop the time measuring feature and um, if i show you by um, starting the time measurement you can actually see that the red seconds hand starts ticking away with the first push. You can just uh, stop this um, chronograph function and start it again with this pusher up here. And if you would actually um, wait for it to go around a full minute, you will see that the minutes hand will then start uh, counting the minutes as well. And since this is a cam operated pusher, uh, it's a little bit stiff, so um, if you look closely on the second hand when I start and stop it, it is doing a little jump down here um, when you actually start the time measurement, which is, well, due to its cam-operated movement. Um, there are some other um, chronographs which I could show you in maybe later videos which have a column wheel and um, or maybe even a horizontal coupling for the chronograph function which makes the timing, timing movement uh, or function start a lot smoother. And we actually now talked for one minute and we can see that the chronograph will move towards the 12 and there you see the little minutes hand starts counting the minutes as well. And with this chronograph you can um, time up to 30 minutes uh, since that's all that your uh, scale on the minutes hand here can actually count. There are others that are able to count hours as well. So, and with the lower pusher here you can actually just reset your central seconds hand and the minute counter as well. So let's have a look at the case back. So you unfortunately cannot see the movement directly here since this is a stainless steel case bag as well. Um, but you can see again the Polyot Aviator logo on it. Um, actually Aviator is uh, written uh, below in Cyrillic letters and you have the brand name Polyot here as well. Um, it actually tells you that this watch is water resistance um, to up to 5 atmospheres, which basically translates to um, 50 meters water resistance. Um, if you uh, well had a look into those uh, numbers in the past, you will know that this is not actually capable to go for a swim. Um, usually you would like to at least have something at around 10 atmospheres or 100 meter water resistance for it to actually survive a swim, but we can talk about that in another video maybe. So as this is a pilot's watch, um, it is not surprising that it's not supposed to go into the water. And down here, I hope you can see it. Uh, this is actually, well, a limited version. You could say it's number 492 of this 999 batch of this watch. But um, I know for a fact that this Aviator watch was released in multiple batches. So it could be that you um, also might have a 492 out of 999 of a slightly different model of the same watch. So let's talk a little bit about the history of this watch. Uh, since it's my first mechanical watch, um, which I was gifted roughly 15 years ago, I have to admit that I actually didn't care too much about it at first. I liked the looks of it. Um, that's basically the reason why I kept it and why it's in, um, I think, still a good shape. 
but um, well, 15 years ago, I wasn't too much into watches and I didn't wear a lot of watches uh, during my normal daily life. Um, but now, 15 years later, I'm very happy that I actually kept the watch because I think it is a very interesting piece and it's a really great thing that I started with this hand-wound chronograph. So my dad gifted this watch to me and um, I think it's very interesting because I was born in uh, 1987 and actually the Russian watches became widely available here in Germany. Um, after the wall between Eastern and Western Germany fell. So my father actually himself became uh, a watch fan when he started collecting Russian watches, uh, which were offered to him on flea markets after the uh, border between East and Western Germany fell. And before I forget it, I think you can still get this watch <laughs> even though it's a quite old model there are some pieces left of it and if you look it up for example on uh, polyot uh, 24 or um, chrono 24 you can find these models roughly at around 500 euros so let's talk about my second watch and my first automatic watch in my collection. It is the Oris TT1 Divers Automatic Titanium, reference 7542. Again, it is a black dial uh, watch. Uh, I think this is a very classical look that many might go for for the first watches since black basically pairs up with everything. Uh, this is uh, a bit more of a junky watch. So we have here a 44 millimeter case diameter and uh, it is quite a hefty watch in terms of height. So uh, it's uh, 16 millimeters high, but uh, since it has these curved locks, it actually wears a lot smaller than you, I, I think um, you would expect from a 44 millimeter watch. It is a diver, uh, so that's why I like this hefty look um, very much. And what the uh, name of this watch already tells you is the case material. This is not stainless steel, but it is a full titanium case and bracelet. And what is uh, so special about this material is that titanium is usually very light, so it's lighter than the stainless steel versions. Um, it is anti-magnetic, it is resistant to heat and virtually corrosion proof. And what is also very interesting is that it's hypoallergenic, which means, uh, well, if you ever had an allergic reaction to um, your maybe stainless steel watch, this could be due to the um, nickel content in stainless steel sometimes. So if that was the case for you, I would definitely recommend a titanium watch because they do not uh, create any allergic reactions at all. But what the advertisement does not tell you is that titanium is a little bit softer than a stainless steel, so it scratches quite easily, which you can see on this watch, uh, which was basically to Helen back with me during my university years when I was gifted this watch for uh, well a specific achievement in university. So if we talk about the looks of this watch, we definitely need to talk about the case back here. Um, what is very uh, nice and I think also important with this watch is that you have a see-through case back so you can actually um, see the balance wheel here ticking away, which I f find very interesting. And I would like to do a video to actually show you another movement and tell you what you can basically see through this window here. So I would like to talk about the movement, which I've already shown you here on the case back and um, the layout of the subdials may be already a giveaway if you're into movements a lot. This is, um, well, it's called an Aorus 674 automatic movement, but it's um, based on the very famous Valjoux 7750, which um, most of the time has this specific subdial layout. 
It is uh, more of a high beat movement than uh, compared to the Paul Yacht. It has a 4 hertz full oscillation, which means basically um, 8 amplitudes per second or 8 beats per second and 28,800 amplitudes per hour, which is usually uh, the number that you will hear for this watch. It has a 48 hour power reserve, so two full days without it it's, um, being winded up and it gets winded up by this rotor during your normal wear during the day. And so it will keep beating on for two more days if you just uh, put it on the table and forget it. It has 25 jewels as well. And um, as you can see um, here in the case back, um, it is a very uh, beautiful looking uh, movement if uh, this is your first automatic watch. It's not very much refined in the sense of um, design, so there are not a, a lot of decorative elements on it, so no special um, straight line Geneva stripes or something like that. Um, it's more of a workhorse movement, but it works really, really well. Maintenance is uh, cheap on it and it is um, quite accurate. And um, the functions on this watch, it actually has a quick setting function. So there are two positions for the crown. Uh, actually, on the first, you can just set your date straight, as you can see here. And on the second um, position of the crown, you actually set your um, time. And as I told you already, or as you know, it has a chronograph function, which means I can start the seconds hand here. And if it goes around full circle, it would start uh, counting the minutes up here and later on the hours down here. And um, you have a bezel on this watch. Uh, it is a unidirectional bezel, so you can actually um, set it here. And it is only unidirectional. So you, um, if you're trying to time, uh, for example, your dive with this watch, uh, you cannot mistakenly set this uh, watch in the wrong direction as to actually lengthen your duration underwater. You can only, if you bump it and um, uh, set another time here, you can only shorten the length of your dive, which is very important for, well, I guess, survival. We already talked about the unidirectional bezel, which is handy for diving, but um, this is really uh, a diver's watch in another sense as well. It is um, 300 meters water resistant. It also tells you that on the watch face and the case back, um, which is really uh, meant for um, deeper diving. And additionally, on the side here, it has a helium escape valve. So this is basically a valve you can open um, during your um, decompression to uh, um, let out your uh, helium gas, which could, if you do not have a specific valve for it, um, during decompression, make your crystal just pop off uh, since uh, helium expands and pushes out your crystal uh, from the inside, um, which has accum accumulated there um, during your dive. If you're interested in more about the helium escape valve, for example, I could do a video about that as well. Now for the history of this watch. I, um, it is in my possession now for eight years and as I told you it's been through hell and back. It's quite scratched up everywhere and I actually also nearly destroyed the movement of this watch because I was uh, in my university years I think dumb enough to take it kart racing with me and that as you will uh, probably know um, was a little bit too much of um, well yeah shocks to the movement and uh, the repair costs around 800 euros which really made me th rethink my watch wearing behavior back then. And um, as I told you, my love for watches grew with this one um, since it was my uh, daily companion and um, it really experienced a lot um, with me and I always found it very, very beautiful. And even though I, well, basically mishandled it sometimes, it um, took the beating and kept on going basically after the, well, only 
only the one repair, but that was it. It needed no other service in all the OC years, and it's still quite accurate and um, kind of my, my daily driver, I would say. So about price, it was um, nearly 2,300 euros when it was released. Uh, I looked it up and, uh, well, I didn't know at that time what expensive piece I was actually wearing um, during my university years. Um, it's still available right now, new, um, in an updated version um, with a little bit of uh, differences here on the 15 minute scale on the outer bezel, the newer models are actually um, having a, a red um, indication here. So it looks a little bit different, but it's basically the same watch with the same specs, the same water resistance, uh, same movement, etc. And what is also different in newer models is that the, um, the dial is um, structured with kind of a, a wavy pattern which makes it I think uh, look really good but um, I like my version a little bit more since the um, red piece here uh, on the 15 uh, minute markings is something that I mm, would not really like I think. So I hope you liked this uh, first video about the story of of the Russian pilot who met the Swiss diver in my collection as the first two pieces. I actually have a lot more in store back here which I would like to talk about and it gets a lot more crazier um, than these two later on. And if you enjoyed this video let me know, uh, leave a comment of what you would like to see or if you're interested in some of the functions of these watches to be explained a little bit more in detail. And um, yeah, if you like, uh, follow my channel and uh, I hope to put up some videos, uh, well, every few weeks since, uh, yeah, I have a daughter, so time is scarce, uh, so many watches, so little time and hope to see you in the next one.